<laughs> yeah. So why don't we dive straight in? So okay. you are the youngest Latin Grammy Award winner in two categories in Producer of the Year and Best Salsa Album. You've got now got your own LP Timbali line. And soon you've got the PBS, which you co-directed and produced for the Rice's Jazz Orchestra hosted by Sheila E. Why yes. don't you tell me how you started to how you got here? Yeah, well, man, you know, all these things that you're saying right now, like uh, these are just, you know, my recent um, uh, achievements. However, you know, I, I've been coming a long way to get to this place and it's been a struggle it's been an independent musician struggle, a drummer's, you know, or a perspective of a percussionist's dream, you know. Um, and I started off playing with my parents' band at the age of 13. I, was, I started playing the drums and then I actually uh, picked up the piano because my dad's a piano player. Um, and then when I got to college is when I actually took music seriously because before it was just a hobby. I was playing with their band. It was my chore. It was like washing the dishes. You need to come and gig with us because we ain't going to pay another drummer. You are the drummer, you know? <laughs> so it was like, you know, that was my job. Uh, so, so I did that. And it was, um, it was a very, very um, big decision for me to, to actually take music seriously at, uh, in the university. I wanted to be a professional soccer player, play soccer all my life. But then, you know, I ended up choosing music at that point. And then I entered the jazz performance um, career, you know, major at Florida International University. And that's when everything changed. I entered as a drummer and then I chose the percussion because I actually, you know, I, I saw this drummer. His name is Dave Shiverton. We were the same age. We got in the same year and we had a jazz forum, you know, and he sat on those drums and he destroyed it so bad. I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to play the drums anymore. <laughs> so I literally like it was so, so you know, it's gospel drummers, man. They're so good, bro. Yeah. You know, and they're like, you know, they're they're playing like these gospel chops. And you're just like, where is one? What is going on here? Like, what the? <laughs> and then I said, no, nah, man, I ain't playing these drums for these people. You're crazy. So, <laughs> you know, I ended up picking up the percussion. And luckily, since I'm Latino, I pick up the percussion. And then I, I was shining myself. And then he was like, oh, man, you're so great at percussion. And I said, this is my role. My role is a percussion. So that's how I got the percussion bug, man. And I stick with it. And I still play drums, you know, but I'm not a drummer, man. You know, I feel like drummers, you either got it or you don't, man. You can't really like your pocket and your sound is your pocket and your sound. And like, there's a certain, you know, backbeat and kick snare, like vibe that if it's not there, it's not there. And us Latin guys, you know, I mean, there's great Latin drummers, but when you got that little percussion swag, like it's not easy to translate that to the drums because the percussion swag is completely different. Same thing with drummers. They try to go into the percussion swag and it's not there because we got a different thing where I think it's more like syncopated and more like saucy, you know, while the <laughs> drums is more aggressive and just laid back and, you know, hard, you know, you guys hit hard, you know? So, um that that was uh that was it for me and then i chose uh, to to learn how to produce songwrite compose and that's what really did it for me because that's what um helped me create my own band and the reason why i created my own band was because i wasn't going to call for gigs uh so that was a, actually an interesting thing uh but i'm so glad i did that because then i was able to be my own boss and never had to wait for my phone call you know to get a gig or anything i would make my own gigs hire people and then I became an entrepreneur and, and yeah, now I'm here, bro. You know, two Grammys later um, and just living the life, really living the dream. Yeah. What an insane story. I absolutely love that. Especially the soccer part. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I was, I want to be a soccer player, man. Like I want to be a football player and go, go play like pro in Peru. And uh, I, I, we were national champions in my high school team. Like I was all in bro. Three teams. I, I made it to ODP Olympic development team, you know, every you know season it was hardcore physical work and gym and running but um you know it was very political uh the the, the soccer career here in miami at that point you know mls wasn't too big you become an mls player you make like twenty thousand dollars a year it was like ridiculous low low budget yeah right now mls players are making a lot of money so i was like i don't want to play in the mls like nobody wants it's like the, <laughs> you, know, you you watch the mls players like that time dude it was like literally seeing people that you've played with like when you were eight years old like it was like terrible <laughs> soccer like no technique no tactic everybody was running around like chickens on the field it was terrible so it was like 
So I had to go to Peru and I went to Peru and it was a different vibe, bro. It was so competitive. It yes. was mean. People were mean. You know, everybody was like your enemy. Yeah. And it was like a different lifestyle, bro. I got scared, dude. I said, like, oh, no, man. I'm, hitting, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to school. I'm going to you know, get my degree and I'm chilling, bro. Yeah. So we actually have the European Championship uh, going on right now. We have the Euros. That was supposed to be last year, but it's this year now. So it's all the European teams uh, playing. The Euro like, Cup. Yeah. The U- yeah. So it's on, it's on right now. So uh, Wales played the other night. And so I, England are playing tonight against Scotland. So it's, there's a lot of hype in the UK right now. Oh, nice, man. I haven't even been following that. They play, uh, yeah, England play Scotland today, I see you today, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Nice, bro. So that's cool, bro. <laughs> and so you went to Florida International Uni. And so what, what impact would you say that that formal education had on your later career? Man, it's super important. The formal, the formal education part is, um, how can I say? It's, it's really important because I feel like it, it teaches you two things. First, it teaches you the basics, like just the basic theory stuff that you're gonna waste. You're gonna feel like you're wasting a lot of time, which kind of way you are, but it's not a wasted time. You're spending time to learn discipline. You're spending time to learn how to come through. You know how to be on time, how to be professional, how to do stuff that you don't really want to do, but you got to do it anyways in order to get to another place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because a lot of times, especially today's day and age with the social media and YouTube, and you kind of you kind of wonder, you're like, I can really learn what I really want to learn there, and then I'll be good. But it's not that it's not that's not what life is about. You know, life is about you know just expanding your horizons, and that's what the university I I, I think did for me. Also, it's a network platform too, where you get to socialize with other people. Um, you you get to um make mistakes in relationships you know you go to parties you know (laughs) you do your thing you know what i mean it's just a great spot to be you know university is a great place and it it really it made my whole um career within music uh make make sense uh they also supported me a lot in my endeavors and my my whole journey because after I graduated, I became an artist in residence. Uh, I did a lot of master classes. Um, and I also was able to use the facilities, right? The rehearsal rooms and practice rooms for a long, long time, even after I graduated, even with my band. So that's, it's a family, bro. It really is. It's a family. It's a home. Yeah. And, and um, I, I can't stress it enough, man. I mean, it's so important. It really is. Yeah, even just to give you that time, right? I did a, I did the same as you actually. I did a undergraduate and then I did a master's degree, and oh. it just, it just gives you so much time, and you're so safe in that time. Like you can, you can kind of do what you want, and nothing is going to happen. Like there's going to be no negative impact on your career or things like that if you try something and it doesn't work, right? Exactly. It, it's the moment to experiment. It's the moment to to try to take electives, you know, to learn about different things. Like, you know, even, even academic stuff is like taking uh, just simple algebra and math and um, the business aspect. You don't know how much math has come into play in my, in my career, dude. I think I'm more of a math guy than a music guy because I see everything in numbers in a way, like everything to me is just numbers, statistics, um, you know, when it comes to road management, um, a lot of the times I have to do it myself because I don't have enough money to pay a road manager. So uh, in that sense, I have to like do all of the numbers for how much the ticketing is going to be, you know, from going A to point B, how, you know, what's, what is it better to get the, you know, get, get the back line in the place or take the own back line from here. Um, I calculate the per diems, the, the food, the stay, how many days we're going to be there, when we got to fly black, how we're going to connect two cities together. There's a bunch of stuff that comes into play. It's not the music, you know, it's just not the music. You see my career being successful and you're like, oh yeah, Tony's music is great. No, it's not, bro. I mean, it is great, but it's so (laughs) much more than that. It's like, it's the presentation, it's the branding, it's how we present it, it's how our rollout is, how we connect with the people, you know, our performance, how the show's designed, you know, doing stage plots, learning how to use OmniGraffle, learning about architecture because you got to like plan your stage plot the way it needs to be you know, 
learning a technology, how to use the click track, how to just program, how, how many musicians you're going to want to use, how many rehearsals do you need, calculate the catering for the rehearsals, the catering for the, you get crazy, you know, uh, Google Drive is your best friend, Google Spreadsheets. <laughs> That's school, bro. You know, I mean, you can learn it on your own, but good luck, dude. It's so much easier going to school. Yeah, but that's what I love about you and your career and you as a person is that you, like, I, I cannot fathom. Like, I, like, I spent all my time either doing, either playing drums or doing the podcast. Uh, but you, literally, like you've just said, you do all of that, and you also like produce. You did your own film. You did the Michael Jackson thing. You're in the studio. You're producing songs. You're on social media. Like, how do you do like balance all of those plates? Man, it's just a difficult thing, you know. I don't, uh, I don't sleep much, and <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, I don't waste time a lot. You know, I just, I'm proactive. I'm very passionate, so I'm, I'm always nonstop. And uh, you know, from the moment I wake up, my you know, eyes open, I go brush my teeth, I take a shower, boom, boom, boom. I'm in the, I'm in the editing room. I'm, I'm doing stuff. And then until I get tired and I can't even go anymore, you know, and I'll take breaks in between, you know, um, pero it's, it's, it's definitely, um, it's not that easy, you know, but, uh, yeah, you gotta be disciplined in this, bro. It's yes. the only way if you, if you guarantee that you're going to outwork your neighbor, Trust me, you're gonna have more success. Yeah, that's just the way it's gotta be. You unless you're like a crazy, extremely talented, like gifted child that is like, you know, because even Michael Jackson is a gifted child. He was working hard, man. His dad was putting him to work, dude. You know, you, he couldn't go play with his friends and all that. So it comes with great sacrifice. If if you want that role, that's the thing. You gotta want it. Not a lot of people want it. Not a, people are, you know, they want to just conform with what they got and whatever. They don't want anymore. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're that type of person like me that wants more, that is like wants to make a difference, that wants to, you know, make an impact in the world, leave a legacy, give back to the people, make them feel amazing, um, go global, worldwide. You got to put in the time, bro. It's the only way. You know, you got the people that there's the regular, you know, people that like the nine to five and just, you know, vacations and all that. And then there's the people that will don't mind the sacrifice to skip that, but their work, their passion fulfills them enough to, to, to enjoy it. And it become quote unquote, like their vacation. Right. Yeah. Cause no one That's will see it that. It's, it's so it, like, this is such a self-motivated career, isn't it? And it's such a, like, it's, you have to be so long sighted with success. So like you, you have to start something now and be like, I know this is not probably going to be that good for another like five years, you know, <laughs> like, exactly. and so having that mindset is it's like people don't see this side of the life, like you said, where, you know, you get like you finish work and then you go and practice or you you're just up all hours of the day doing different things like people don't see that side yet they want what you have. But what, but there's no one without the other. It's like a stick. Like you can't pick up the success without having like all of that other stuff on the other end. Right. Exactly, bro. You know, that's, it comes with, like I said, it comes with, with, with a lot of sacrifice, man. You got to sacrifice a lot. Um, and, and I have actually have a documentary. It's called Mas de Mi that um, I wanted to show the people the story behind these Latin Grammys. Like what, how did I win those? You know, how did I, how did I get nominated for album of the year? Like working out of the garage, my house, you know, it's like, um, and that, that's really, it's a 90 minute documentary and it really goes into depth and it shows you the amount of sacrifice I had to go through, you know, uh, and it shows the craftsmanship, you know, and, and that is the best explanation that I got, man. You know, there, there's a reason why the success is there. It's not just like a God gift thing. It's not just like a talent thing. It's, it's not. I mean, yes, timing is very important. God's blessings are always going to be there. But I feel like in a way, God looks at what you're doing. You know, God looks at your intentions. He's aware of how much you really want this. And when, and when only when the time is right, he'll open those doors and say, it's your time now. You know, yeah. and sometimes yeah. he'll close those doors on you and he'll do it on purpose to test you, you know, 
yeah test you see if you got that force of will you know to see if you got that faith in yourself if you believe in yourself enough you know yeah it's all on purpose man you know that's yeah. why you can never give up bro i mean it just sounds simple right never give up never surrender you know um be all you can be all these little phrases that you see on social media all these memes you're like yeah let's go you know inspirational quotes <laughs> it's easy to read them bro but do them dude do them for 10 years bro without stopping yeah i cannot agree more because you can be given all the talent you want but like i and like you probably in university there were like loads of guys who had just like such a natural ability but i think the people that actually make it are the ones that just keep going they just keep oh. keep plodding along and just keep like that folk that like almost like obsessive focus and then you all of a sudden like I'm, I'm i'd be interested to know if this happened to you where you had these people that when you were like when you were like a bit younger you were like these guys are gonna like go to the top and now you're here and it's like they fell out the wayside a long time ago oh my god you have no idea how many times that has happened and that's why i always say like i'd rather be the turtle dude I'd rather be the guy that's going slow, bro, but secure, checking out my path, you know, looking left and right, then just running sprint. Ah, and then all of a sudden you run out of gas and you're just like, hey, I'm tired of this, you know, or you, whatever. <laughs> you, you, you definitely slow and steady, bro, um, because you get, to, you get to sink in everything. Everything sinks in nicely. You know, don't rush it. You got patience. Like you get to enjoy the successes and you get to enjoy the losses and the obstacles that you have to go through. Those are moments to enjoy as well, because they're like, it's kind of like going to the gym, bro. You know, like you, you, you that lactic acid that builds up in your body. It's painful, bro, but it's painful. It's good, bro. You're like, man, I know, I know this is doing some damage, but it's damage that's going to get repaired. It's going to be stronger. <laughs> you know, I'll be able to run faster. I'll be able to do more pushups. I'll be more cut up, you know, like, ah, you know, it's, yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah. But also having that longer vision, it's like, you're not going to go to the gym for two days and then be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's the same with us. It's like, you're not going to pick up a pair of sticks, practice a few rudiments for like a month. And then all of a sudden you've like got it, you know? <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly. That's why you got to be a wise person, man. You got to like know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and again, just put in a lot of the, the discipline and, you know, the time. Yeah. And at the sound of, at the risk of sounding like a complete novice, when you're playing timbales, do you, are you playing a lot of the same like rudiments and things that you would play on a kit? Yes, but no. Like there's a lot of like the technical aspect of how you play the drums and you play like a classical snare drum or whatever, just the, the regular technique is very actually very different on a timbale. And, and you can only develop that by actually playing timbales and actually going to salsa gigs and looking at other timbaleros and seeing how they play. Because a lot of them, they don't play with good technique, quote unquote, but their sound is crazy, bro. Right, You're like, right, right. It sounds ridiculous, dude. <laughs> so you got to play with that sound. Like sometimes you got to press on the stick, you know, like on the casket on the side, you're not just banging it and, and leaving the actual shell. You're actually sticking to the shell. So that is actually not, you're supposed to use your rebound, right? There is no rebound there, man. It's just like, God, but that's how it sound. You get that sound. Um, also, the rim shots are are different, and the way you the where you place the the stick on the head um, is is very different too. Um, so so you know, there's a lot of arm movement because you're playing standing up. You know, yes. so it's not all it's just more of the wrist. And so when you do these rudiments, yeah, you apply a lot of the same rudiments, definitely like paradiddles and you know double strokes and all that good stuff but you will play them differently because you're looking for that crispy, you know, um, I would call it like a crispy, uh, electric yet full sound, you know, it, it's, uh, and it's a very dynamic sound, you know, sometimes you got to play elegant, soft. Sometimes you got to play with aggressive, you know, hard strokes. Um, so it, it, you know, there's different ways because you don't have as many sounds as a drum set, but you're kind of being the drum set, you know? So you don't have like all these, um, you know, hi-hats and toms and the snare, the deepness of a kick, you know? So you got to like make sure that the left drum is kind of like a tom, but it's also kind of like a kick too. So you, it, it's, it's definitely a technique. And, and there's not that many like places that actually show you this. That's the problem. It's like, there's no like, 
And you know what the problem is too, is the people that teach it in the universities as well. And this is why it's so important to mix the academics with the, with the street that they don't got the street. They don't, they don't, they're not in the streets. They're not out there, you know? So you got to go out there. You got to go to the street. You got to learn from those guys. You got to be like, yo, how do you do this? You know, uh, give me a lesson, go to their house, you know? And then that's how you really, really learn. Yeah. And so are your hands, because I know like it's a drummer, it's one of the biggest drumming faults is that your right and your left hand are not as strong as each other. Oh yeah, for sure. But I got that defect to the max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a super defect. My left hand is like handicap, bro. <laughs> but you know, I make it work. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You sound great. So because <laughs> one of your hands will always play an ostinato as well, right? On the cowbell. Is it yes. like, will it usually be your stronger hand doing that? Yeah. Yeah, most, okay. most definitely. Most definitely always. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's just usually the way you're taught, you know, so you just develop it that way. Yeah. Because we have Latin uh, quartets and things on the ships and it's just, oh, like, it's, the, yeah, it's the most fun to watch those guys. Like they're always yeah. having such a great time. Yeah, I know. Because it's all dance music, you know, it's a, it's a good time. It's, um, it's all about party atmosphere, you know, Latin music. Um, so, so it's definitely fun to, to play for sure. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's so much fun to watch as well. Like, do you think there's an element because it, uh, it's obviously like salsa music and dance music that you are also dancing whilst you're playing? Like, do you think that has a huge impact on the sound? Well, yeah, I think the music, um, you know, makes you want to do that. Um, it just calls for it. Um, and I would say it's just being you know, you just get used to doing it. Like you're used to just grooving and, and smiling and having a good time, you know? Yeah. And you see what guys like the guys like Tito Puente do it, you know, those are your idols, right? So you kind of want to just mimic them in a way. Um, and I've, it's just the way it is, but there's actually some percussionists out there that are like extremely like, like they look like there's no expression, <laughs> no movement. They look like statues, you know, but their playing is killing, dude. You're like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. And you'll see all those, usually, usually those guys are the studio guys, you know, yeah. people <laughs> want to hire them to record, but not to play live. Cause they're like, yo, why is the guy so bored? You know, and not, and then it's not that they're bored. It's just that they're, that's the way they express themselves. You know, they, they just concentrate to the max. And I think it's actually a psychological thing. I think that these musicians are geniuses and their mindset is like so focused bro it's so focused that um they don't even realize what they're doing with their face or with anything they are just like on that like playing perfect yeah and they usually do play perfect you know there's nothing wrong with that it's just a different 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 concept yeah because i think for the studio like that's great but obviously if you're on tour you kind of want to see the person enjoying themselves, right? Exactly, bro. You got to kind of play the role, you know? Yeah. Um, but there is also a, um, a cool, like, vibe as to being, like, playing, like, uh, I would say, like, mean, you know, playing yeah. like, with aggression, you know? And it's also music also has that. It's not always just a party dandy vibe. It, it's also music always, also comes from the street. It comes from New York, you know, the, you know, the Bronx, you know, that, that mean attitude um so so that you have percussion is also that come from new york that have that vibe and that's also really cool too that, that gives it you know that makes it look that makes it looks cool you know makes yeah it look fresh so yeah it's different but i'm the, I'm, the, I'm the guy that likes to smile a lot man it's just my vibe <laughs> yeah i mean even videos i've seen of you recording in the studio you're still the same oh yeah man because i it's just a part of me you know i'm like that yeah. even not playing you know? well, I mean, I, I told my mom this week that we were doing this. And I showed her a picture of you and she was like, oh, my God, he looks so nice and so friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It clearly works. <laughs> it clearly works, man. You, you got to give, I mean, you got to be yourself, bro. And if you like, if you're a person that likes to give happiness and, um, you know, like Tito Puente always did, um, he was just always happy. And, and it looked like he cracked a lot of jokes. I mean, I never met him in person but he looked like this spontaneous person that you know found a, a way to make people laugh all the time and i've always admired that about him uh and, and that's what i want to be you know so i kind of caught into it 
Yeah. And so I like I was just about to ask you, that was the next question actually was about your idol being Tito Puente. And so what, what are the sorts of the qualities? Are they those sorts of qualities that you really admired in him that you want to emulate? There's several of them, man. I mean, there's so many actually, because he, first of all, as a musician, it starts off with that, his music, right? Um, he was a great timbalero. I mean, he was the king of the timbales. He was the best, right? Um, aside from that, like he was, he was actually a crazy chop monster, man. His single strokes were ridiculous. So him as a timbalero was already like, wow. You know, then his sound, you know, his timbre on his, his instrument was always on point. Everything was so, so dope. He was such a, an innovator at his time, you know, being a band leader, being a front, taking the timbales into a front, um, you know, atmosphere where he was the, the star he he was the one who began that that's a, that's a big thing to do you know and, and during that time and then he was also an arranger he was a producer he was an artist so as an arranger you know i was like man like you know there's not a lot of drummers and percussionists that are that are producing and arranging and orchestrating he also played piano he went to juilliard he was an excellent orchestrator so all of that stuff is what what first got on to me then was the whole thing that he was super charismatic and he was smiling like crazy he was like funny on he was so natural speaking on live tv shows they even had a simpsons episode where tito puente like arrived they made a simpsons tito puente like who that how you know like <laughs> you're a, you're a puerto rican timbali player bro yeah. you know how are you on the simpsons are you serious like yeah so that to me was like, this guy is just crazy, bro. This guy's insane, bro. <laughs> like a Superman, dude. So I know I'm light years away, bro, but I know I'm headed that way, bro. And I'll get as close as I can, dude. That that's where I'm headed right now. I mean, from where I'm sitting, it, it looks it looks it's looking good so far. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good. But it's, isn't it amazing when you have idols like that? That you know, like the similarities that you can now say that you have from him is like remarkable. So imagine what someone is going to say about you one day. Hopefully, man, that's what I want to, I want to do is just leave that legacy, you know, like there are guys that, like, like Tito Puente that, you know, there's just, just, there's people that make history, bro, you know? Yeah. And, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with enjoying life and, you know, having family and just being a dad, for example, just being a brother, being a son, being a husband like those are all things that are just amazing that is the true legacy actually that that is the most important but when you when you do that along with making history bro and bringing joy to people's lives and helping people and um changing uh you know a movement bro or creating a movement that's like you know that's big bro and and that's why I admire Tito for that, you know? And I'm like, I want to do that, bro. That's so cool, bro. That's like fire, bro. You yeah. Know? Plus it's also but, like that like that portfolio career that you were talking about, which is what you have now. And so how do you become like accomplished in, like it's hard enough to become probably a well-known Timbale player, let alone a Grammy winning producer. Like how do you get good at that? And then live to like, I saw your LG advert, you know, and you looked like such a natural and then like, how do you become like really good in, in all of those? It's, um, bro, it, how can I say it? It's like, it doesn't happen overnight, bro. I mean, I remember when I was doing my first YouTube channels, I would do like 75 takes, you know, of the same <laughs> thing. I would just like, I would do it back and forth. Like, why do I look so awkward? You know, why do I sound like a robot? Why do I, what the heck, what's wrong with me? So it's all natural, you know, it's, it's all natural to go through these steps. You got to do it. You got to just go out there, do it. You got to be on social media. You got to be able to be comfortable in front of the TV. You got to be able to be comfortable in front of a host. Like I've done that already. And you see my first interviews, I look super awkward. I'm sweating on the freaking set. You know, I'm like, oh my God, what the hell, dude? You know, like what's wrong with me? Now I go over there and I'm just like running in there with a sandwich. I'm like, yo, are we ready? <laughs> you know, it's like normal. I, I, it's like my backyard, bro. You know, like I, I did TV for an entire two months in Peru as a, you know, as a judge on a, on a voice competition, you know, like um, I give you my opinions, like being on live TV every single day. 
So that's just the different aspect of your career that you got to develop. And how does it start? Getting a camera, filming yourself and putting your videos on YouTube, you know? And, and so that's the sort of personality part and, and everything else is the same thing, you know? The producing element, you got to spend time on Pro Tools. You got to learn how to write charts. You got to learn how to program. That's why you use your, use your time wisely, you know? Use your youth um, instead of going to those parties and, you know, going to the movie theaters and like just going on vacations and stuff like that. You have to sacrifice and say no to those things for some time and spend time at your house, spend time in your room. You know, you're not watching like Netflix. You're not watching this. You're not, you're not wasting time. There's so many things that can waste your time these days. And I'm sorry, not waste more, spend your time because it's not wasting it. If you're having a good time, it's good for you, you know, but again, if you want to be that person, if you want to make history, if you got that ambition, if you're born with that little spark, you know, that, that little firecracker that is like, I want to do that, then you got to put the time. You've got to make the discipline and, and make that a priority because if not, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I love that. And also pulling the trigger, right? Because it's easy to think like, I want to do it. I want to do it. But one, it's actually showing up to the practice room or spending time on Pro Tools or working on your craft. But then it's also like showing up for those opportunities, you know? Of course, man. Like you got to be there, bro. You got to be out there. That's why social media is so important. You got to go to events. You got to network, you know? So those are like things that you get. There's going to be so many awkward moments, and it's just going to feel like you want to kill yourself, like, <laughs> you know, going to like, a, you know, a, a little event, you know, where you got to come up to a big guy, you know, a big shot. And you got to be like, hey, my name is Tony, you know, like, and then they're just they look at you and they're like, <laughs> and they look back, you know, like, who are you? You know, yeah. those are the moments that you're going to be like, why am I even doing this? Yeah. But you're going to be like, you know, one day you're going to turn around and you're going to be like, I can't believe I just did that to you, you know? That's yeah. happened to me so many times. You have no idea. Like people that I knocked on their door, like trying to get to them, no, no attention. You know what? And then comes times come around. They're now they're knocking my my door. You know, <laughs> and it's like you see what I mean. Like, and I don't judge them because that, that's part of the game. Yeah, it's all meant to be. Yeah, it's all but, meant to be. But what I love about you though is instead of just waiting for an opportunity or thinking like it'll come at some point, you were like, I'm just gonna do my. I'm just gonna do it myself. Like, like. Oh, I can't find a bandmate. I don't have any auditions. Like I'll just be the guy who's auditioning other people. I think that's such a great thing that people can take away from this podcast is that you do not, you do not need permission to like, to do it. Like who, why should you ask for someone's permission? Like, just do it. Like I didn't ask anyone's permission to do this podcast, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm actually going to do? You just give me an idea because what you're saying is so true. It's like, um, you like, for example, when I started my own band, we were terrible. It was the worst band ever. And like, <laughs> but we were a band, you know? So it was like, and, and you know what? I, I, I didn't compare myself to the best band. I just compared myself to myself and that's it, you know? And, and it was what it was. And this, my first demos, the first little CDs that I would go out and knock on people's doors and show them, you know, my artwork, my music, my recording, my lyrics, my arrangements were literally cringe city. Like it was just a cringe. <laughs> I look at it right now and it's just cringe. Like I can't even see it. Like it just kills me. So I'm actually going to do like, I'm going to do the Tony Sukar cringe show. Like yes. on my YouTube channel, like a series of cringe and just go to all my old stuff and say how bad it was and how, what the process was like and where do I actually started because I will be, give people a like sort of um, a perspective as to where I come from, because now they see me all oh, Grammys, you know, and I'll start off like my Grammys and all this, and my latest music and like, you know, Sheila E and, you know, John Cicada and like Mark Anthony, like India and all these huge things that I'm doing. And then all of a sudden just do like a rewind and I'm there in my bed, my bedroom, my old bedroom where I used to do my music and I'll come out and I'll look, show you my artwork, for my first CD that looks horrible, you know, and I'm like, this is where I started and boom, I start playing it and just start listening to it. And I'll be like, this is the worst stuff. And I'll just tell how many things are wrong with the music, how bad it sounds. This is terrible. I can't believe I came out with it. But that will inspire people to just be like, you know what? I got to start somewhere. You yeah. got to start somewhere. Don't I, be afraid to start. Absolutely. Well, make sure you credit me for that idea. Yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> yeah, and I'll have you. I'll have you as my as my guest first. Uh, what is it, my cringe cringe guest? You know? <laughs> You're gonna be yeah. cringe, man. You're gonna be dying there. Dude. Oh, I love yeah. it. I can't wait because I know exactly what that's like. I know exactly what that's like to be there and watch it and be like, oh my god! Like it's probably a good thing that when I was playing in open mic nights, like flip, it was like flip phones and the cameras were so shit, so you wouldn't yeah. be able to actually tell what I was playing. <laughs> probably for the best reasons, you know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But I, but I love that. I love that idea of because like uh, you'll probably know as well. So many like you know well-to-do people and famous people and people who have done really well for themselves will say like oh if i can do it anyone can do it but then it's like they're already like up here and you you didn't see the process down here whereas what i love about that idea is that you will show people be like it actually was me doing that yeah, you know yeah. doing that cringy shit and now <laughs> and now look at me now so people are like it's so much more believable because it's authentic yes yes it's it's, it's very authentic man and that you know, I think that's a very good thing that I should do. I mean, I've shown everybody what my process is like and what I've gone through now, but um, man, and I got so much great footage, bro, like of when I was doing this stuff, like old school tapes, you know, um, this was like on VCR, bro. It's just like, you know, <laughs> recording like handheld, dude. I'm going to like, I'm gonna release that stuff, bro, because I think people will get a crazy kick out of it, dude. Also, it's mega unique. To like yes. to put yourself out there like that. I think when people get to your stature, Grammys, Sheila E, all that stuff, then they they kind of want to disassociate from all of that other shit, you know, that got them there. Cause I don't know, maybe it's like a complex of like, I don't want people to think I'm shit or something, you know? So I think people then tend to be like not show or post anything before they hit that level. Yeah. So I think this could be this could be mega unique. I'm telling you, man this is a really good idea. Um, and I just want to inspire people, bro. And I want them, you know, to feel what feel confidence in themselves. I want them to feel confidence. I want them to feel like it's all possible, you know, because some, a lot of times people, you know, and that's the thing with social media, bro. I mean, it's great and everything, but at the same time, it's intimidating because you see all these people like million views, million followers, and they're so good and they're so talented and so genius. Like, Jacob Collier, dude, like freaking super perfect pitch. <laughs> Charlie Puth, like, you know, he hears like a little screech sound in the street and he's like, oh, that's an A sharp. You know, you're, <laughs> and you know, and it goes viral. And people are like, oh my God, Charlie Puth is like the best. And it's like, I get it, bro, but I'm going to show you like the real stuff, like when you're beginning and you know, you know, because those are all right, you're ultra talented people. I get it. But there's ultra successful people that are not ultra talented but that just that are hardworking, you know, and they came from somewhere. Yeah. I, yeah, I cannot agree more. And especially because like what it'll do for you is a bridge that relatability gap. So like from me to Jacob Collier, yeah, I've been playing drums for 15 years and even I am like, I have no idea how he, how he like puts together these arrangements. It's absolutely mind blowing. And I don't know where he came from. So I wouldn't have seen the earlier, you know, probably 50 takes um, that probably weren't that great. Or when he was younger, the crap that he was trying to produce. Whereas what it'll do is it'll just like from someone listening to, to like you, <clears throat> it'll bridge that gap because it'll be like, well, he, he actually wasn't that great, you know, and now he's great. Exactly. So it shows that that work ethic actually really does have real life consequences and it pays exactly, off. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's the meaning behind the cringe show, Tony Suka. So, Tony Suka's cringe fest. <laughs> yes, Tony Suka's cringe fest. Oh my god, it's gonna be crazy. I like it. I think people are gonna love it. Yeah, and I think I, uh, I'll probably invite other people to show their cringe stuff too, man. Yeah, cool. this could this could now yeah. be a whole show based on people's early cringy shit that they were posting. Yeah, dude. After this, this, I'll bro. send you um, Ed Sheeran. I don't know if you saw it. He, uh, a few years ago, he was on a show in the UK called The Graham Norton Show. And he actually showed on live TV a voice note of when he was like 13 trying to sing a song. And it was fucking terrible. No. It was, it was, I'll send it to you after this. It was so awful. And oh everyone God. was like laughing at him and stuff. And he was like, it's the same thing. He was like, it just shows. I just, you just work really hard, you know? super interesting bro that's crazy so I maybe, hear you, that. maybe you can have ed sheeran on your show and then he can show that clip yeah <laughs> that'll be hilarious bro i mean 
I'm telling you, man, I got some bad stuff, though, bro. I don't think anybody can outbeat my bad stuff. <laughs> Maybe crazy. it can be like a thing of like, can you beat me? <laughs> yeah, I know. Can you do anything worse? Like, can you be more cringe? Like, can you be more cringe than this? Impossible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you go. That 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 that's gonna take off on its own. Oh my god, bro, this is gonna be crazy, bro. Yeah. Wow. I, I, <laughs> no, you know what? I'll sell I'll sell my cringe as NFTs, yo. <laughs> Like yeah. who wants to own this cringe thing? Yeah, bro, yeah. that's a huge, huge idea, bro. There you go, Look, cringe NFTs, bro. Hell there yeah. you go, Tony Suka's cringe NFTs. Dot yeah. com. Dot <laughs> com. <laughs> I love that. Oh, you're gonna win a fortune. <laughs> no, it's gonna be funny, bro. It's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> and so you now have your own LP Timbales range, which is huge, right? That's literally mm -hmm. like having your own drum kit like made after you. So what was that process? Like, I mean, they look gorgeous. They look like visually, they look amazing. And so what was that process like? Did you have a lot of creative input with those? Yeah, actually, um, we, we had been talking about doing this for a very long time. I just didn't know when the time was going to be because making a, a Timbali signature series is, is time consuming. It's a very big investment as well. Um, you know, they're, they're actually very expensive line within the timbales line series they could be probably the most expensive timbales in the lp line um i'm not exactly sure but they're definitely top top three i would say um and it was definitely um a team effort i would have to give a lot of credit to um mr derek over there at lp that um had the idea of making it um, visually impactful, <clears throat> you know, I was more sort of set more of getting a cool sound and, but he was like, man, it's gotta be, it's gotta be colorful, man. You know, your studio got a lot of colors, you know, you guys gotta be like, it's gotta cut through with colors. And then I was like, man, you're right. You know, cause I was thinking about doing a black and white sort of with my unity vibe, you know? Yeah. Um, I had like a unity design that was black and white. Everything was sort of black and white for me. It was very elegant. It was very Japanese, you know, sort of like yin yang, you know? that type of vibe. But then um, he told me, uh, what would you think? He told me, what would you think? I've been developing this with these people from Taiwan uh, with a rainbow plate finish. I said, rainbow plate, what's that? He's like, yeah, bro. I mean, it's like a, it's like a gradient. I said, a gradient, he's like, man. So then he showed me the uh, first picture of what just a regular gradient would kind of look like. And I said, bro, that's it, dude. I know it. So then that's when I said, well, these are the colors that we need to put. The purple and the blue, which happens to be the colors like the, the Mas de Mi, my, my, you know, my studio and all that. And uh, the blend. Um, and then I told them, I was like, well, this, this process, you know, I want it to be uh, very unique. It's got to be sleek. And then I got to get the black uh, satin the nickel uh, rims, you know, so it's different. It's, it's, you know, there's never been black rims before the black hardware, black heads, you know, so it's got that, you know, that deepness. And then obviously the sound, it's gotta be as closest to the Tito Puente bottle as possible because that's the best sound that there is. And I think there ever will be. So we literally based our sound model off the Tito Puente traditional Timbali stainless steel. So, cause there's the Tito Puente, the newer versions with the top tuning, but I, there's something about the top tuning that it doesn't, the heads don't sit well and don't last as long for me, especially cause I, I do a lot of live gigs and I'm always like, you know, when I get excited, I hit them hard and everything. So <laughs> the, the side tuning, which is the traditional way has always worked. And I always said, man, those old people have been doing it this way for such a long time. There's gotta be a reason why. And and really the difference between tuning from the top and tuning from the bottom is nothing. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, it may be a little bit easier access, but I don't really care. I would care about the sound and I care about the heads. So so that was developing between all of us. And then I got the bonus from them where they were like, Well, they said, We got a problem, but it's not really a problem. And I said, Really, what's that? He's like, Well, the way that these these drums are made is that they go into like this huge oven. It's like a big oven, right? And then they just, the temperature is like freaking like volcano. And then <laughs> and like some laser, some laser starts hitting. And then these shells, they start changing into colors. It's kind of like, 
it's not a paint. I thought it was a paint, like it was dipping. It was not. It's like a reflection type of thing. And so they can never make the same gradients ever. It, like every nasty. single timbal is going to be unique to the person that buys it. There's not going to be one. That, it's like a serial number on each one, literally. So, for example, I have two of them right now. And one has like a more of a purple bluish vibe. And the other one has more of like a yellow green, you know, purple thing. And so each one is it's cool as hell. And then sometimes even the front is different from the back. So like if you're a lefty, it'll look different too. So it's like, it's so cool. You know, like I really, really like enjoyed that about it because there's two things. First of all, I have synesthesia, which is where you actually see colors when you're mixing music or you're, you're doing music. Like you see colors, like certain sounds make you see different things. So it's, it's a very colorful theme by that kind of goes with the synesthesia thing. And then also... I love the unique vibe that everybody will have their own sort of set and it will look different. And then we could probably do trade-offs, you know, it's like, yeah, I want to trade mine for yours, you know, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That is, that's absolutely incredible. Like that's mm -hmm. not a problem at all, is it? Nah, man. I love that. It's like, that's so dope because now it's like, you know, everybody, you can go to a different store and it's like, you, you see two of them and then you could choose which one you like better. You know, that's so cool. It's like, it makes it more unique. It makes it more, um, este, in Spanish it's called artesanal, like handmade, you know, like just special like artisan, artisan. Yeah. Artisan. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they look amazing. So anyone who's listening, please go and check them out. They look absolutely incredible. Yeah. And actually for the first 20 people that buy the timbales, which is going to be announced in July, um, we're going to give them a free signed cowbell, which is the ES 12 cowbell, my favorite cowbell of LP. And assigned uh, Mas, Mas de Misiri, which is the one that won the Latin Grammys and everything. That's amazing. I don't play timbale or thing, but I might do it just so I can get those things. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> and so some of the songs that you've made are so amazing. I don't understand a word of what people are saying, but they are absolutely incredible. And so the one that you've just done, <clears throat> I would definitely get the name wrong, but it ends in uh, Ever Cassion or something the one that you've just like recently oh done. yeah 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 tu mejor equivocación yeah i mean it's so so catchy it's so good it's I, like i absolutely loved it and so you know i always think i always think like this like when fleetwood mac were in the studio creating rumors like did they know like that it was going to be something like really quite special so i would love to know when you're in the studio making this and Hold on, I'm gonna find the other one because there's another one that I absolutely love that you've done as well. So uh, actually, ac just so uh, uh, e -ora que... oh yeah, yeah, que hacemos? Yeah, that one's like oh really? Insane as well, yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah, those are recent. Those are all recent productions. Those are all recent. recent yeah, and I listened to the Michael Jackson stuff, which was also incredible. So I'm making my way onto the Master Me album. At the Thanks, moment, man. but you know, when you're in the studio making these songs, like, do you know that it's like this is like something quite special? Um, like you kind of know because you get the goosebumps, you know, in the studio, but you don't really know what's gonna actually connect a lot with the audience, too. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of can get an idea, but you never really know because there's songs that I've done that I thought that were just like whatever. And then end up having like people go crazy for, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but like these songs, like Tu Mejor Equivocación, especially that song, which by the way, I'm actually going to release the English version of this song. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's called Worst Way. It's so dope. You know, oh, I, do. I cannot wait for that. When you, when you hear that song in english bro you will you're gonna go crazy bro. this one gave me goosebumps and i didn't understand a word of it especially yeah, you, when that guy when i watched that video i listened to the song first and then i watched the guy sing you know when he goes like mega yeah, high, yeah, really high and really i think high. it's you on the camera and you're like what yeah, the yeah. fuck fuck yeah <laughs> like yo what the fuck yeah dude <laughs> yeah. he's crazy bro the guy is insane he's like the weekend dude like mixed yeah. with bruno mars mixed with hector lavo like he's crazy dude so we we actually wrote the song in English initially. The song really? was born in English. Yeah, the song was in, was a song that he wrote the lyrics to in English because he he speaks more English, sings more in English. And then it was my idea to say we need to do a Spanish version because more of my following Spanish speakers. This is Latin. This is salsa. So we did the Spanish version. But 
I didn't launch it in order. Like I was going to do the English and the Spanish, but then I was like, no, I'm going to do it Star Wars style. You know, first the <laughs> ending and then the beginning. So we gave him, a, you know, now I'm going to go and I'm going to go backwards in time and tell people this is actually how the song started. And then people are going to be blown away because for me, for me, the magic of this song happens in English. Okay, so cool. if you like okay. the Spanish version, you will die with this English okay, version. You cool. will literally die. It's crazy. The vibe is insane. Um, and we're actually shooting a music video for the English version that we're going to drop. And we're shooting the video on Tuesday. I'm so excited. It's a dope story, you know, and the, and the, actually, you know, English, English language is more metaphorical. Like you could say a lot more in less words than in Spanish. Spanish is very, it's, it's more passionate. It's got like longer words. It's, it's, it's different. It's a different vibe. Uh, it's got definitely more like I would say, yeah, passion and, and like, um, I don't know, just like attitude, but the English is, is like cool, dude. It's like fresh, bro. You know, it's like, Oh, like what? It's like the weekend. It's like, it's like, you know, it's got some Jay Z's type of thing. Like, you know, where it's talking about pills and then drugging me and then, you know, and then it's all metaphorical and it's also like time travel. So the verse, the second verse only, you know, like the first verse makes sense after you hear the second verse. Like, it's like, yo, what? <laughs> like shit like that. You're like, yo, what's going on? You can't do that in Spanish. Like yeah. it's hard to do it in Spanish, yeah. but in English you could do it because you could say little things that, and, and, and you can sort of break it down and it's just so fresh, but because there's a lot of like, it's in the English language, there's a lot of short words, yeah. you know, that say a lot. Yeah. Where yeah, 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 like, yeah. like for example, saying two pills, for example, in English, in Spanish would be dos pastillas. Yeah. So you already have like extra syllables and it happens with every single word. So it's annoying in Spanish to try to say good things with little words. Yeah. So, um, so melodically, it's it's beyond, bro. And um, and so now when we went to the studio, bro, and we cut that, I knew it was special, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, like I'm telling you right now, people are going to freak out, bro. I, I literally yeah. cannot, I cannot wait. Like I absolutely, like I want to sing to this one, but I haven't got a clue what they're saying. Dude, you're going to go crazy <laughs> with this song, bro. Like crazy. There's nothing out there like it for sure. Oh, I'm so excited. So you, so there are certain songs that you like, you just know that it's going to. Oh yeah. 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 These are the one of those songs that I know that are going to be like sort of groundbreaking, not only for my repertoire, but for people in general, for salsa music, for, like it's gonna st it's gonna establish something that people are gonna be like, okay, like salsa music needs to go here. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? fuck yeah! Like honestly, it is such a vibe. Like it's such a vibe, and so I can, like you said, I can definitely see more people like The Weeknd, like Dua Lipa, like those like mega stars, like coming across into that. Well, look at Justin Bieber did um despacito and that was like yeah. one of the best selling songs of all time yes you know? and that was one that was one spin-off exactly no no i mean like i said there's got to be more crossover stuff happening little by little um and i think like once um enough people start doing it it's gonna and it's gonna catch the trend so i think this is i want to do is i want to inspire people with this you know that's that's what i want to do yeah well i really hope the that when they do they come to you because your sound is so great and so unique like you can hear you in both the one that i just said i can't pronounce it again <laughs> but the and the one before that you can hear those similarities especially like when they go up you know like yeah yeah when it goes I mean? into the yeah it goes into the call and response section which is like the coro y soneo is called in spanish where where it's like just the brass madness, you know? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes, like, you know that, that video, that, uh, that TikTok of you singing along to it is that section, you know? So fire, man. Oh, so wild. <laughs> but there's also one in the one before that as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like the, um, these, these songs and these uh, productions and, you know, I'm doing right now something for Sheila E, for example. They're coming strong, man. And they all got this, they got, they got my sound, you know, I make sure that it's got my signature without yeah. even actually trying it. It just happens because I put my heart and soul into it. You know, it's those fucking laser oven timbales. 
that's a that's killer, the, bro. That's the They're sound, crazy. bro. That's the sound, bro. That's the sound. I'm telling you, bro. The laser. That's a, <laughs> the cringe laser fest. Yeah, clear. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, but like you just said, with Unity, that was such an incredible album as well. So obviously, Michael Jackson had a big impact on you. And so, what I would love to know is when you're taking on a task like that of like the king of pop music, one of the most notorious people on the planet, really unique sound. How do you like keep that, but also reimagine it in like in what you do? Well, um, it, it's kind of like a trial and error type process. In the beginning, it was like that, like trying to figure out how much of each uh, genre I sort of like keep like the essence, right? And then I had to make a decision and now it worked out. So now I know what that formula is like, right? Uh, and obviously the formula will will tweak and cater to each individual song that I do. But in the most part, like I just did a Latin version to leave the door open, by the way, which is, I don't have a date for dropping that, but bro, that song came out crazy, dude. Like that song is already crazy as it is, bro. But yo, it's like, you got to leave the essence of the song in the song, bro. If not, people are going to be like, what is this cringe? You know, you got to leave it. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. You got to leave the, you know, one of the best words that I've learned in the, in, in my vocabulary is cringe because now it, it's, it's, it's before I, before I didn't even know if that word existed or I didn't even know it. people didn't use it. So I didn't know the terminology for what bad stuff or, or what weird stuff made me, you know, it just made me feel. Is there like, a Spanish oh. word for it? I know there isn't actually. No. I gotta find out the Spanish cringe uh, vocabulary. <laughs> actually, let me just research it real quick on Google. Um, Google Translate. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, like it, it. I don't. I don't know how to like tell you exactly what the formula is, but for sure, it's important to leave the essence of the songs. Uh, and so you gotta, you know. Oh, look, it says "morir de vergüenza." But you see, look at that. A perfect example of how. The Spanish language is so like weird, cringe in English and in Spanish, morir de vergüenza. Like, <laughs> imagine you know why? You're so, uh, I'm so what you. does that literally translate to? It's kind of like embarrassment. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But it doesn't really. A cringe? Make sense. No, it doesn't really cover what cringe means though. Cringe is like inside you. <laughs> It's it's taking over like it's just like I I, I need to get out like I'm done I'm you wanna, out you want to like crawl inside a hole and just like die <laughs> yeah exactly so you know I mean yeah right right now bro I mean I I found out the formula but it's kind of hard to say and you just got to kind of balance the elements you got to like know the essence of both worlds and you got to try on error and you got to just use extreme taste bro and be yeah. the anti cringe person. <laughs> like just just think of yourself what would be cringe you know and stay away from that bro because there's so many records that i hear that are cringe as hell yeah i'm like how do these people put this out dude yeah you know we're gonna start your own new like merch line and it's just gonna be like cringe <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> it's like don't cringe please yeah stay away. hashtag yeah. don't cringe yeah 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 no, it's crazy bro and so like we were saying earlier on, I think that's such a lovely way of putting it, actually, because you've got to be so delicate with those things in order not to like what on one end, like not piss anyone off, but then also to like inspire people to to like create stuff that's already out there, but then put your own spin on it as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Finding that, I, I like, always... that perfect, happy medium. Yeah. You, you take your influences, you take what you like and you create your own formula and you create your own style, you know. That's how I, I see it. You can't really invent anything new these days. I mean, everything has already been invented. What you can do is you can you can combine stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. and and then that will that will create a new sound, obviously. But but like I said, I mean, there's only you know twelve notes in, this, in the twelve pitches. That's it. Like there's just so many chords you can do, and it's more about the vibe. Now it's like you know what what is actually endless is the ideas and the sound design aspect and um, using technology to your favor. Yeah. Plus that uniqueness, right. Of like, you are just you, you're yourself and you're happy to be you and you're not trying to be someone else. And that will come with its own sound. Like whenever, whenever people ask like, well, how do I develop my own sound? And it's just like, just develop your own passions. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. If you love like 
dubstep or like drum and bass but then you also are obsessed with like russian folk music like just fucking put those two things together because then that's like your sound right rather than thinking like social media is great and stuff but it's like it's really difficult i guess for people who are not sure where they actually stand because if they see gospel chops then they're like right i want to do gospel chops so then they follow that little path and then they're like right i want to you know, be as good as Jeff Picaro was on Rosanna for shuffling. So you write, okay, I'll go over here. And then the more they do those sorts of things that they think are just trendy or in a trend, the further away they get from themselves, which is further away from like them being successful because you're just following everyone else. 100%, bro. Uh, you got, you got to dump pack, man. I mean, you got to be yourself, bro. And but I mean, there's going to be a lot of time. Like, I mean, I remember those struggle days, bro, where I was like, what do I do? You know, what, where do I go? And how, what, and a lot of the times creating your sound is going to be uh, a process of, of, of learning and you will have to imitate people. Yeah. And that's the best way to learn. Transcribe, imitate, and people will call you, Hey, you're copying this guy. Yeah, I am. His music is sick yeah right you know what I mean? yeah and it's like oh wow and then all of a sudden you start involving other elements like i said my sound that i first started is not anywhere near where i am now you know it's a different thing now i've created my own sound yeah but that's the sound that's actually a combination of many different sounds that i had to imitate first to learn them yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and so like the timbales you are now one of a kind <laughs> Yes. <laughs> exactly. And, and so like we were saying about social media earlier on, you know, it's not always about followers and things like that, but you do have a large following between, I think between Instagram and TikTok, you have, you know, almost a million or just over a million followers. So what are some of the keys to kind of being an online pro? Cause I know musicians find it hard, like what to post, you know, what do I post? When do I post? Do I do covers? Like, you know, this, 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 like, so what would you say are some of like the, the things that you have done that you've seen successes on social media with? Oh man, it, it's hard to, to really like, uh, tell you, um, because there's just a combination of things, man. Like, you know, you really know what's going to work for you because, You just got to like, again, find your own personality. But one of the main things that I would say is create content, quality content and uh, engaging, engaging content, stuff that's relatable and be consistent with it, you know, be consistent to not fall off the the map with, um, you know, especially uh, when it comes to um, algorithms and stuff like that, the moment that you start falling off the map and you don't start, po- you don't post anything, then you you get forgotten. So, combination of things, bad, but but don't you know don't rush it. And um, again, I, I would rather have ten thousand um, engaging fans than a million not engaging fans. So you got to make sure you maintain your fans, and it's not just like a, sort of like little phase, you know? Just yeah, stay in communication with them. You know, make but, them feel but you also, part of something. also feels like mega authentic. It just feels like you. It just feels like you're documenting your life, which is great. It doesn't feel like there's a team behind it, you know, scheduling posts and all that shit. It's literally that I think the what the thing I love about your social media the most is like the behind the scenes, like like that video of the guy singing mega high, and then you're like, What the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know? like that stuff is so great. Cause like if you already love the song, to see that, like, can you imagine right now? seeing Phil Collins in the studio playing the in the air drum fill, but he fucks it up like three times before he does it. Yeah, You know, so like that would be so cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, man. And that's the cool thing is that we're able to do that. Now we have our phones, you know, we have a camera in our hands all the time. You know, uh, one of the main, I mean, I, I always tell people the best camera that you can have is the one that's on you because that's the only one that you have to document it. So document it and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Just use it. Don't yeah. Do it. And so, you know, throughout like this incredible career, I'm sure it's going to reach the heights that you want it to because you just seem so mega determined about it. Did you like, you know, I think I can speak on behalf of of quite a few people and even friends of mine, even people I have done on the podcast. I was uh, I did a podcast with Katy Perry's guitarist uh, the other day, and she was saying, you know, when she got offered the job, she had like massive imposter syndrome, you know? 
And then I was like, no way. Like, that's like crazy. Like, you're so good. And like, you know, she clearly wanted you because you're so great. So it's like, has that ever come up in your life where you thought like, God, I can't like, I can't do this. You know, like, why? Like, why me sort of thing? Or has it always been a narrative of like, I can do this? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it happened with the Grammy situation, you know, when I was there and I got nominated and all that stuff. I was like, why? Why is this even happening to me? How, you know, so soon? Um, I was up against like some really badass producers, man. Like probably the best in the in the industry, you know. Working on like Ricky Martin's album, all these like huge albums um, that were nominated for album of the year, and I was a producer that had just only self produced my own album, you know. Yeah. And the Academy voting members voted for me. The unknown guy, dude. I was like, what the hell, bro? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> but. Uh, like I said, man, that, that's the things that you just ask. Uh, you don't ask why, bro. You just give thanks, bro. And you're just like, thank you, God, you know, for, for giving me this. I worked hard for I worked damn hard for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, but thank you, God, because at the end of the day, he decides, bro, you know. He decides, man. And that's what you got to just leave it in his hands at that point. Yeah, because no one can ever take away that hard work. No one. You know, so although there might yeah. be like a thing of like, well, why me? In the back of your mind, you've got to be like, I worked like real fucking hard on this. So that's why me, you know? Exactly. <laughs> if, if if you had cheated the system or something or, you know, bought votes or bought your way through things, you know, a lot of people buy their way through radio and buy their way through um, stardom. Then you ask yourself, why you're, why, why me? Like, why, why, why am I even doing this? It make you feel like you maybe have to, you know, like, I don't know, just, I think it's just a dark place to be, you know, but yeah, but if you do it honestly with work ethic and good integrity, bro, I mean, it's only going to feel good, dude. So yeah, I'm excited, bro. I'm excited for you. Like, Thank you. I, but I can already tell it's going it, to like, it's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be so great. And I'm so yeah, excited for this journey. this English version. It's oh, it's got fire bro fire. when's it when's it coming out <laughs> um i'm not exactly sure yet probably maybe i'll, I'll drop in like two three weeks because i'm recording the music video on next tuesday so i gotta edit and all that stuff and i'll be taking the official photos for that so i gotta get the artwork done and then yeah i've got to mix the, the english float vocals and then boom we're ready so sick so sick and so we're actually on to the last one this has been like such a fun time this has been such a great chat. thank you man thank you <laughs> and so what would your final piece of advice be for people that want to want to do what you've done? Uh, I think my final piece of advice is to, uh, and I actually said it already, is to take things slow, like the turtle, you know, don't rush into things because this is a, this is a slow process if you want to do it the right way. Um, you know, you might get lucky and you might have your own one hit wonder, but then also that, that gives you a very uh, anxiety high level to the max because that would be like, oh my God, I got to beat this now, you know? Yeah. And then a lot of people get that anxiety and stuff. So don't worry about it, you know? Just go day by day, do your things. Don't worry about the cringe, you know, do your stuff. <laughs> let, let it sit there. Let the cringe sit there. Just put it out, get people excited. There's always going to be uh, an audience for everybody. And trust me, people love new people. Like, I don't know how many people have always told me, Oh my God, I'm so excited that I, you know, I discovered you when you were nobody, you know, and, and like, those are the people that are still to this day as day ones, you know, those are the guys that will become Patreons on my Patreon page, you know, they'll support me monthly, they'll subscribe to everything, they'll buy all the music, they'll go to all my concerts. And those are the guys that followed me when I had 3000 followers on Instagram and I was nobody, you know? Yeah. So there's going to, there's people out there trying to discover it. Cause they just love that. They love, Oh my God. Like to find people when they're nobody, they, it's like a, it's like an ecstasy, you know, it's like, yeah, ah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so you have right now a, a big chance, an opportunity to gain new fans, hardcore loyal fans at this point, make them feel special, get them, Get them to feel um, like if they're a part, okay? Like if they're a part of your career and because they will be with you along the way and they will help you. So that's my best piece of advice. Wonderful advice to end on, I think. Awesome. Thank you so, thank you so much, Tony. It's been, it's been amazing. And oh, thank you, man. 
So we will end it there. Um, but yeah.